You already know it's BC and the McClendons don't make sense. Three major signs that a person is sent by the opposition. You know, sent by the devil to be a stumbling block and a snare to your life because they don't want you to grow. They don't want you to be a soldier for the most high. Number one, they will never assist you in anything that will make you better. Pay attention. Anything that's going to keep you plummeting down to darkness, that's going to destroy you, ultimately, either physically or spiritually, they don't mind that you want to go to the club. They don't mind that you want to stay, you know, in your addictions. They don't mind. They're going to be all for it. They're actually going to have fun with you at night. You know, they don't mind dealing with you on that level, on that frequency. But the moment you want to change, the moment you want to grow spiritually, you want to pick up your cross, you want to have convictions, you know, you want to look at everything you've done and actually have a sense of regret, and you want to change your life, they're going to start thinking you strange. Oh, why are you being all spiritual? with you religious now? They don't even know what they're talking about, but they're trying to label you. They're trying to discourage your growth because they don't want you to grow. They want to keep pulling you back because they wasn't sent to help you grow like that. They were sent to stop you from growing spiritually. That's why the moment you start obeying the law, that's your commandments. They looking like you, like you the one that made them. They trying to look at you like, oh, why are you, why are you bringing all these standards? Why are you doing this? Stuff? Like they don't understand that you serve a higher power. They acting like you made these rules up. That's the interesting thing about it. So they, they will look at you as the primary enemy number one. The moment you start having conviction, the moment you start having standards that, no, I'm not going to let you talk to me like you used to or handle me like you used to. Now these people got problems now because you're just not allowing them to have free reign over your life or do whatever and say whatever whenever they felt like it or have whatever type of morals that's immoral around you. You know, so it's crazy. Number two is appreciation. They would never show appreciation to anything you ever done for them. I mean, literally, you can help them in every aspect of their life when they were going through mental turmoil, when they were, you know, struggling here and there. You can help them in every aspect. But they will never show you appreciation. They'll never pull you to the side and say, oh, thank you for everything you ever done for me. I'm so appreciative. I, I just really can't even imagine anybody else coming through for me like you. They'll never say that. They're actually making it appear, oh, yeah, you know what? Um, Hey, remember I did this for you, man? Da, 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 da. Cause I know you, yeah, 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 I know you did that, but check this out. I did this for you. They're always going to try to gaslight it. You know, they ain't going to really, you know, ever give you that appreciation, that respect that you're looking for. Because if they were to do that, that's them admitting that you're a spiritual, you know, blessed, favorite individual. They don't want to admit to that. They don't want you to know how important you are. They don't want you to know, you know, that the Lord has a favoritism on you, that the Lord really values you. They don't ever want you to know how valuable you are. Because showing appreciation is showing value. And if they don't show appreciation to you, believe me, they don't want you to know your value. They just want you to stay stuck. They want you to have insecurities. They want you to just feel like, you know, you're worthless. That's what they do. That's what they want. Number three is they weaponize gifts. This is crazy. I, I can't even tell you how many times this has happened to me. But their kind gestures is the same as the enemy's kiss. As the Bible talks about they will use any type of kind gesture in a way to kind of distract you from what they're really trying to do to you. Like they literally want to keep you in a position with them or keep you on some type of level with them by giving you gifts. But the moment you want respect, the moment you want standards, the moment... You want to add value to yourself. They're not going to be with it. They're not going to want to ever acknowledge anything that you got going on. That's going to help you grow and enter into that straight and narrow path that they know that you are destined to enter. They don't want that. Remember, they're always going to make it known that their kindness has a deadline because 
Their job is to always make it appear as if, you know what, look, look what I'm doing for you. They want to throw it in your face. Oh, look, I'm, I got you this before. Oh, look what I'm doing for you. You think I don't love you? I do love you. Look, I, I got you this. Because though they're using these objects, they're using vanity to stop you from ever realizing their true purpose. Remember, we cannot be unaware of his devices. You cannot be unaware of the people that's around you and that they're using certain things, even materialistic things, to stop you from seeing what their overall purpose is in your life and what value that they're adding to your life spiritually. Are they truly a person that's going to help you elevate to a higher level? Are they truly going to help you grow? If they're not, then you got to understand something. They're not meant for you. And then just sent to be a snare and a stumbling block.